Hello, welcome to the huddle. I'm Vahe Gregorian, Blair Kirkhoff on my left, Sam Mellinger on my right. This is a very special non-Royals version of the huddle. That's all we've been talking about for a couple months, but we've got a few other topics in mind on this Royals off day. Um, I think we can start really with Walter Byers dying, and, and Blair, there's a lot of reasons Walter Byers' name still matters, but here in Kansas City, maybe uh, it's, it's almost lost on uh, the younger generation that the NCAA started here and on a, over on 11th Street, or at least the executive offices did. I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit about that and, and why it still resonates. It, well, for a lot of reasons, uh, not the least of which is we, we consider Kansas City to be a college basketball mecca, um, and, and we have tournaments every year. Of course, the Big 12 was just awarded uh, the tournament to Kansas City through 2020 just last week. Well, one of the reasons we are a college basketball mecca is because the NCAA tournament was played here so often in the 1940s and the 1950s. And the reason it was played here in the 1950s was because the NCAA office came to Kansas City. It originated in Kansas City, and it did so because Walter Byers, the first executive director of the NCAA, moved it from Chicago to Kansas City. Walter Byers, was a, he's a Kansas City native, went to Westport High School and University of Iowa. And then he, 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 he was named the first executive director of the NCAA. The, the, the office came, as you said, to 11th Street in Kansas City, ended up over in Johnson County before moving to Indianapolis. But his impact on college sports was profound. He, he really was the, the, the first, uh, I think, sports leader who was a personality, uh, the way we think of commissioners of baseball and the, in the NFL. He was that in college sports. And the two big things I think that he would, he'll always be remembered for, enforcement. He yeah. was, uh, they wanted to protect, protect the, the, the financial uh, you know, juggernaut that college sports became. Uh, and so he was big in enforcement. And, uh, and then the other thing, of course, was all the television contracts, football TV contracts that the NCAA signed through the years, um, he wanted to protect the money in, in the NCAA and pretty much keep it from the athletes. He, he didn't want the athletes to share in the money that the NCAA was making. Now, he held this position until he retired in the 1980s, about five or six years after he retired, he wrote a book, a book on yeah. sportsmanlike conduct, and he renounced almost everything he stood for <laughs> and fought that athletes should be paid or, or at least share in some of the financial success of college sports. Well, that takes us something to something we, we've talked about in the past, not so much recently, but I, I think you've had some thoughts about where, where, where we should stand on athletes being paid. And um, I think there's distinctions to be made, and, and we've probably talked about this even on the huddle before, but seems to me um, it's one thing for them to be uh, reimbursed or whatever term you want to use for images of them being used, but another thing to just say we, we've got to find a way to give them more. But do, do you have any particular feeling about that to this day, Sam? Yeah, I think the likeness thing should be a no-brainer, yeah. that, that they should be able to, to get some of that money. And I also think that there should be room somewhere for them to take out loans on future earnings. And the NCAA already allows this on the insurance policies that, that guys can – uh, the guys can get to cover themselves, which, by the way, have never been paid out. Uh, so they may or may not be real. Um, but if, if a guy is, is on the fence between, you know, and this happens the most, I think, in the NBA, uh, in basketball. If, if a guy's on the fence of, of whether to come back or go and money is purely the reason to go where he thinks that he might enjoy another year, benefit from another year, why not let him take out a $50,000 loan, a $20,000 loan, a $10,000 loan uh, that's, in my view, interest-free, and that he can pay off uh, once he gets drafted. I, it, there's, it doesn't have to be a salary where a college athlete is going to sign a three-year, you know, five hundred thousand dollar contract or something. It, there's, there's a lot of room in the middle where I think reasonable people can can find each other. Speaking of the NBA, it, it seems to be a, a, I think, a particularly uh, hot year for the finals. And, and I know you guys have been following it somewhat, although you, didn't you disappear last week? Uh, I did. So <laughs> did you find a way to watch any of that stuff, or you were? No. You're really <laughs> there, off there's the grid. nothing okay. going on up there. All right. Well, cigars we're gonna, and fish. So curveball for you then. Yeah. I mean, are you are you already uh, looking forward to these finals? And, and and it's been a long time since Kansas City had an NBA team. How is it that you stay interested in the NBA? I just love basketball. Yeah. And and I think that the NBA has gotten to a place now where it's such a fun product to watch. I think people that there's a lot of people, especially here in Kansas City, that tuned out the NBA basically after Jordan retired. And for a while there, it was an ugly product. It was, you know, 78 to 74 would be a final score. And it was, you know, too much bullying and too much, you know, one-on-one -on -one and stuff. And you know, all of that's gone, I think. It's, it's a really cool product now. And I don't think, 
not that I'm the, the biggest NBA fan in the world, but I love basketball and I do watch the NBA. I don't remember being as excited for a finals since Jordan retired as this one because it, it's the MVP against the best player in basketball. It's, you know, the Warriors plays gorgeous style of basketball. It's up and down, it's fluid, it's uh, passing, it's selfless. And then LeBron is this unstoppable force. I just, I, I think Golden State will win, but I, I've, I've never looked forward to, to a finals this much since Jordan retired. We're running out of time, Blair, but one last topic we wanted to hit was just a Fred Hoiberg. As we speak, we, we think he's going to go, but we don't know. What kind of, if he does go, as it seems he will, and leaves Iowa State for the Bulls, what, what kind of impact does that have on Iowa State? Well, if, first of all, incredible sadness on behalf yeah. of the fan base up there. I mean, I cannot think of a coach who is more – uh, who's more deeply embedded in a community than Fred Hoiberg is, of, you know, at Ames. It's incredible, the, you know, what, what he's meant, what, what he's about and what he's meant to the Iowa State and Ames community. Uh, so profound sadness if, if he does leave to go to the Chicago Bulls. But, you know, he, he's, he's made it clear ever since, you know, he, he was an NBA player that someday he wanted to coach in the NBA. Uh, Tom Thibodeau gets fired from the Bulls. The Bulls are a, a team that was, went to the Eastern Conference Finals this year, or not the Finals, but the semifinals, I guess. And and uh, it looks like a team that's uh, you know a playoff type team. It's got, I think it's pr pretty. Everybody's pretty sure it's going to happen. Sad for Iowa State though. They're going to be terrific next year. Preseason top ten based on who they have coming back, including George Niang and Monte Morris. Uh, you know, just a great cast of, of, of returning players. And they've really emerged as the big challenger to Kansas and the big threat to their 11-year streak of, of Big 12 championships. And, and they've been pretty important to Kansas City in the Big 12 tournament. This is a big party here because of what Iowa State brings to uh, their, their fans, bring to the, to the Power and Light District and Sprint Center. So if it happens, and I'm pretty sure it's going to happen, sad day for the Big 12, but uh, good luck to Fred Hoiberg. Yeah. If, if, that's, yeah. if that's in his heart, that's where he wants to be. And I'll tell you what, if it doesn't work out in Chicago, he can always come back to Iowa State. Well, I'd like to give Sam a shot at that, but we hear the music playing in the background says uh, we're going to get the hook. So thanks for joining us uh, on this non-Royals edition of the Huddle. And follow us for all, all Kansas City sports and everything going on all around us at KansasCity.com. And uh, thanks for joining us.